What's up YouTube? Welcome back, my name's Tony. So a few weeks ago I released a video all about Reaper's basic hotkeys. And you guys seem to really like that video. You also had a lot of suggestions for other hotkeys that are incredibly useful that I missed in that one. Now if you guys didn't catch that original hotkey video, I'll put a link down in the description for you. I'll also link it right up in the corner here. Now before we jump right into these hotkeys, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps out the channel a lot, and it helps me to be able to make more videos for you guys. Also, if you feel like supporting the channel just a little bit more, follow the link down in the comments to buy me a coffee. I'm a big fan of coffee. So the first few hotkeys I've got for you guys today are great for organizing your session. Pressing M drops a little red marker into your session wherever your play cursor's at. Once you've dropped a marker, you can double click on the number right up here at the top of your timeline and give it a name. Which can obviously be really handy for marking spots that you're going to come back to later to edit or for organizing your session. You can drop a marker at the beginning of the verse, the beginning of the chorus, the beginning of each different section of the song so that you can easily navigate between them. Each marker also has an ID number, which we'll come back to later, and it lists the position where on the timeline it is. You can also color code your markers so that you can further organize your session. Personally, if I'm dropping a marker for myself to mark where I'm going to come back and do an edit, I'll change the color of it to match the color of the track that I'm going to need to edit. So if I'm marking a drum thing that I need to address, I'll turn it blue. If I'm marking a bass thing that I need to address, I'll turn it red, etc, etc. Another handy marker hotkey is that by holding shift while you press M, it'll drop a marker where the play cursor is and automatically pop up with that window that popped up when you double clicked the marker so that you can label it right away. This is really handy for me when I'm listening through a track and something pops up that I'm going to need to address. So we've got our track playing along here. Say I hear something right here that I need to address. Shift M. And now I can say edit here. And the marker dropped right where the play cursor was when I hit Shift M with a label attached to it. Now say you've put that marker down to note something that you need to edit. You've done the edit and you don't need the marker anymore. You can hold down Alt and click on that marker to remove it. Okay, so I've just taken a minute and gone through to organize my session here. So you can see up on the top, my markers are labeled verse, pre-chorus, chorus, the re-intro, another verse, pre-chorus, etc., etc., etc. Just kind of breaking things up so that it's easier for myself to navigate. Now, as I mentioned before, each of these markers has a number. My verse is number one, my pre-chorus is number two. I probably should have started one on intro that was number one, but I'm not going to reorganize this all now. Once you've got your whole session set up like this, now you can use the number buttons on the top of your keyboard to jump to these regions. So right now my play cursor is on the verse, which is number one, but say I want to go to the next verse, which is number five. I just hit five, and the play cursor moves to where I want it to be. Say I want to hit that uh, next chorus, I'll hit seven, the play cursor moves over to seven. Now another cool thing you can do once you've set up your session like this is create regions for each section of your song. Now regions are a pretty cool function of Reaper, and there's enough that you can do with them, I could probably make an entirely different video. If you would like to see a video entirely about regions in Reaper, leave me a comment down below. If there's enough interest, I'll make that video for you. Anyways, back to the region. So once you've got all your markers set up here, you can go up to the top of your timeline and double click. That'll create a time selection between your two markers. Now that in itself is a pretty handy shortcut, but once you've got that time selection made out, if you press Shift R, it'll create a region that you can see right on the very top of your screen here. Once you have a region, you can hold shift and double click to open up this edit region button where you can give it a name. So I've just gone through and created a region on each and every one of the sections of this song. Now here's one of the reasons that I really love regions as a writing tool. Because once you have your track mapped out like this with regions and everything, you can simply grab one of these regions on the top and drag it around. Now all of a sudden that chorus that was over here is moved over after that first verse. So as an arrangement tool, you can very quickly map out your song, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, etc, etc. And if you want to say like, hey, what happens if I double up this chorus over here? You can do that in no time at all. Or if you want to say, take this uh, re-intro after the chorus and just see what the song sounds like without it, you can just click and drag it to the end of the track. And not only does it remove that section, but Reaper also fills in the gap for you. So you don't have to do a whole bunch of tedious editing just to hear what it sounds like to not have that section there. So among many other things, regions are super handy for experimenting with your song structure. All right, so back to the hotkeys themselves. 
I don't know if you can really count these as hotkeys or really just navigational tools within Reaper. But the next smallest I have for you involves the mouse's scroll wheel. So the most basic thing you can do with the mouse scroll wheel in Reaper is zoom in and out of your project by using the scroll wheel to go in and out. But there's a whole lot more you can do with that scroll wheel too. So once you're zoomed in on a session, if you want to navigate through your tracks going side to side, you can hold down Alt and use the scroll wheel to scroll left and right. Or if you're looking at your tracks and they're just too small for you to see what's going on, you can hold down Control and zoom in to enlarge your tracks, zoom out to shrink your tracks. You can also click with your scroll wheel by pressing it down to move your play cursor around without selecting the track underneath where you clicked. So with a regular left click, you would move your play cursor but also select that track. But with a scroll wheel click, you can move the play cursor and not select the track. So here's a handy editing hotkey for you. Say I wanted to take this rhythm guitar section here and move it onto the track below. Now you can pretty easily just grab your track with the mouse and move it down. But if you're not careful and you don't have your snap to grid set on, you can move the positioning of this track unintentionally. So if you want to avoid that completely, what you can do is just highlight the section of track you want to move, and on the number pad on the right hand side of your keyboard, use the arrow keys moving down or up, so number 8 or number 2, to move that section of the track up and down through your TCP. So using 2, I can bring it down through these other tracks, and moving 8, I can bring it back up through these other tracks, without having to worry about it shifting left or right on the timeline. Lastly, I'll leave you with two incredibly handy hotkeys for sorting through the tracks that you've recorded. So you can see here on this track, I've got five takes recorded. We're on track three out of five. Pressing T will move you upwards through the take numbers. So move me from three to four, press T from four to five. And pressing Shift T will move the highlighted section to the previous take. Well, that's all the hotkeys I have for this video. I hope these ones have been just as handy for you as the basic hotkeys from the last video. If you like this video, please leave me a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what some of your favorite hotkeys are. In the next installation for this video series, I'm going to show you guys how you can create your own hotkeys in Reaper, which is a super handy function and one of the reasons I love using this program. Well, thanks again for tuning in, guys. If you like this video and would like to see more content like this one, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, there's a link down in the description that you can follow to buy me a coffee. I don't exactly know how much of this stuff I drink throughout a day, but it's definitely more than one cup. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.